Hello, and thank you for listening to Citizen Speak. My name is Garrett Martin. Thank you so much for listening. So I just want to start off by saying that I'm just going to change the format of the show just a little bit. Instead of uploading here and there willy-nilly like, um, I'm going to change to just Tuesday broadcasts. Uh, so every Tuesday, I will try to have one up in the morning, if not in the afternoon at the latest, um, where I will spend more time devoted to talking about every single issue that I talk about. And instead of just like eight minutes here or five minutes here, I'm going to figure out a time that I would like to do about 20 or 30 minutes at a time and go with that. So with that announcement, let's hop right into it. Uh, The Iowa caucus is two weeks away. Uh, We've just had two big debates on both the Republican side and the Democratic side, one each. Um, Let's talk about the Democratic debate first, since it was the most recent Um, This was really the debate that Bernie Sanders had to come out swinging. It was either go big or go home for Bernie Sanders. And uh, Martin O'Malley as well, but we'll get to him very shortly. Bernie Sanders, he's been rising up in the polls uh, very strongly. Um, Some polls show him leading in both Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, He still doesn't have the gap closed in every poll for the Uh, national election, but it's becoming very thin, the difference between numbers of Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. So coming from a very weak campaign announcement, let's be honest, it was, it was just him outside with a handful of reporters, uh, wind blowing on his microphone and tossing his hair around, which is fine, nobody worries about that, and him just basically saying, hey, we have a problem in our country, I'm here to run for president, and I hope to fix it. Kind of a very small little announcement, but since then it has exploded into one of the most historic campaigns of just the primaries because he's raised the most individual campaign contributions out of any candidate in U.S. history. That's amazing, Um, especially considering that he's gotten some of the least amount of airtime Four candidates. Um, I mean, we have uh, so many candidates in the GOP, so they don't fully count. Um, but like, the airtime is fully devoted to either Trump or Hillary Clinton, um, and Bernie Sanders gets just a small little crumb thrown his way. Um, so he's really done well with what he's gotten, and for this debate, he really did come out swinging like he needed to. He brought the fire that he so desperately needed. Um, At times, he sounded a bit like a broken record, to be honest with you. Um, He kept saying the same talking points over and over and over. And I get it. They're very important talking points. But sometimes when Bernie Sanders talks about the corruption of uh, Wall Street and big banks, it leaves the average voter kind of hoping that he explains it more. But I get that he doesn't have time to delve into it. You know, go watch his speeches online. Um, Follow him on Twitter or Facebook and and read more about what his policies are. Um, I mean, there's plenty of shows now that are actually picking apart his policy ideas and what he means about them. So it's good for the average voter. They get to see a bit more. Um, But Bernie Sanders, he just couldn't get past that broken record feel for me. Um, Hillary Clinton, at the start of the debate, she seemed very off of her game, um, mainly because Bernie Sanders had released his health care plan and how to pay for it only two hours before the debate started. He basically released the plan for everybody to read, and then he went out and started picketing in the Fight for 15 picket line. Um, So Hillary Clinton, she seemed a little bit worried and off her game at the start. Also, because she sees her poll number slipping, she just didn't quite seem her normal Hillary self. Um, At this debate going into it, um, I had expected her to do a lot more of her nervous laughing, hoping to uh, just play that, oh, hey, I'm just a fun person type of card. Um, But no, there was hardly any laughing from her at all. It was kind of just, hey, I have to put my nose to the grindstone and keep fighting for what I want. And she did well for the most part. The worst line that I had heard from Hillary Clinton was 
the moderator had asked her a question about Vladimir Putin and her relationship with him and if she would hand him a reset button. And her answer was, well, it depends on what I would get. We're talking about Vladimir Putin here. There's still people who are outraged over Crimea and the treatment of people in the Ukraine directly because of Vladimir Putin. Um, <laughs> he just got the enriched plutonium from Iran as well. And there has to be a lot of other people besides myself who go, wait a second, you would hand Vladimir Putin a reset button? Out of all the things that Vladimir Putin has done that we see and we're just like, whoa, we need to keep this guy in check and keep a close eye on him. You would hand him a reset button? You know, I'm all for democracy and for pushing ahead and doing things diplomatically. But with somebody like Vladimir Putin, you can't just hand him a blank reset button. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. Um, it's like sending Iran a blank reset button. No, we lifted the sanctions on Iran. We have a deal in place. If they violate it, the sanctions go back in place. It's not a reset button. It's an option to move forward. But Hillary Clinton, she had to bite her tongue a lot during this question because it she didn't want to come off as too buddy-buddy to him, but she didn't want to really betray the ties that she's made so far. So it was really an eye-opener as to who Hillary Clinton really is. And Martin O'Malley, this poor guy, you know, he keeps getting cut off. He almost didn't make it into the debate until Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders petitioned to have him in the debate. And even then, he got asked like two, maybe three questions. And when his name was brought up, he had to fight to get in there just to say anything. The moderators, for the most part, did a pretty poor job, in, including Martin O'Malley. Um, I had did an online poll as well um, for who would who's winning the uh, Democratic debate. And I was actually surprised I had a couple votes for Martin O'Malley on there. Um, so there are Martin O'Malley supporters out there, even though, like Bernie Sanders, he's not getting a lot of airtime. He's uh, Unlike Bernie Sanders, though, Martin O'Malley, he's not getting a bunch of campaign, campaign contributions. So his campaign is pretty underfunded, and as we see in our current political system, if you don't have the money, sadly you don't get to play with the big boys. So I'm glad that O'Malley was allowed to debate. He made some good points. Uh, he tried to get in there as much as possible. Um, his best line in the debate was talking about a woman that he had met on the campaign trail who said that, she doesn't want politicians to say boots on the ground and to refer to her son that's a soldier as just a pair of boots on the ground. And it makes sense, you know. I mean, I'm as a veteran, I don't really care if somebody says boots on the ground or not. Um, it is what it is. It's a simple term that most people can wrap their mind around. Um, so it's all right, but a lot of people resonated with that. And I think it will help O'Malley out just a little bit. But let's be honest, O'Malley, this campaign, doesn't have a fair shot. He doesn't have the backing that he needs. If he sticks trying to become president over you know, the next four, eight years or so, I think that he could stand a chance. He has a decent head on his shoulders. He makes good points. But he's just not ready enough, I don't think. So in this debate as a whole for the Democrats... It was nice that the moderators kind of stepped back a little bit and let Hillary and Bernie kind of duke it out a bit and Martin O'Malley could jump in there here and there. And that was nice. Um, but the moderators just let Hillary talk and talk and talk. And it didn't matter if she went over her time or not. They were going, oh, hey, Hillary, you went over your time just a little bit. And it didn't matter. She's still talking, much like I'll talk about here with the Republicans in just a moment. The moderators just get walked all over. And they don't stop it. They're not there to actually stop anything. They're just there to pose questions here and there. And that's it. Um, but the one interesting thing to take away from this was how NBC cut off Hillary Clinton before their commercial breaks. She would start to say something, and then the moderator would go, what? No, we're going to commercial break. And they would just cut her off. It happened two times. 
and they were going to be really big talking points for her. But after she got cut off the second time, I think that there was such a strong push on social media about uh, NBC doing this a second time that when they came back from the second commercial break where they interrupted her, they let her talk again. They said, all right, we'll give you 30 seconds to respond. And uh, Martin O'Malley goes, no, can I get 10 seconds? And the moderator says, no, no, you can't. <laughs> So poor little old Martin O'Malley. I feel bad for him on that that part. Uh, but let's go to the Republican debate that we had just had uh, during the weekday at a decent time when normal people can watch it. That's right. The Democrats have had a horrible, horrible time for their debates. Yesterday's was at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Most people are getting ready for bed. They're putting their kids to bed. They're not coming through and watching. Excuse me. So, the Republicans, they had their debate. Um, it was basically just a showdown between uh, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, as most of us had expected it would be, as Cruz has tightened the gap dangerously close to Donald Trump. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like either one of them. I think that they're both just loons. But Donald Trump... I think he's less of a loon, yet he's more dangerous with his talks of banning the Muslims or deporting all the Mexicans and um, all of his other hateful rhetoric, rhetoric that he spews out. Horribly dangerous for our country. But Ted Cruz would actively stomp all over the First Amendment, the separation of church and state. He has actively throughout his career tried to abolish the First Amendment to get prayer back in school, to make this a quote-unquote Christian nation, to take away gay rights, I don't think that we can go backwards. I know that we could go backwards, but as a nation, I don't think that we can or that we should by any means. You know, the LGBT rights, there's something that people have fought for hard and arduously. It's been such a dangerous journey for many of them. And there's finally light at the end of the tunnel. We can't go backwards. But that's one thing that I thought they should have brought up in this Republican debate was uh, the issue of same-sex marriage. I know that it's basically said and done, and I'm glad with that. But with somebody like Ted Cruz, I think it should have been challenged. Um, with Donald Trump, he had the amazing turnaround on Ted Cruz where Ted Cruz says, oh, well, Donald Trump, he has New York values. And then he was asked to explain it. He goes, well, you know, you, the moderator, you might not know what New York values are because you're from New York. But I can assure you all the people here in South Carolina, they know what New York values are. And a huge round of applause. And then this amazing, silent buildup comes from Donald Trump about what New York values are. And it's completely not what Ted Cruz was talking about. Let's be fair and honest with that. But Donald Trump, he twisted Ted Cruz's words about the New York values to relate to 9-11. And as we know that if you put 9-11 into anything, you're going to win the crowd back and you're going to get a basically a standing ovation. So Donald Trump, he says, you know, I saw after the attacks in New York on 9-11, you know, it was quite a horrific attack we smelt the smell of death for weeks afterwards and no other city in the world could have done what new york has done and they've really come through and you know when somebody says new york values that's what i think but when somebody like ted cruz says new york values he's just spitting all over us is basically what he said there at the end and it was amazing the crowd they cheered for him the same people who cheered for ted cruz just moments earlier then turned and cheered for donald trump over this and Cruz has been hit so hard, so thankfully hard, by Donald Trump's twisting of, his, of Cruz's words. Um, but let's get off to the other candidates real quick, um, just to talk about their lackluster performances. Uh, Chris Christie, like always, he goes, oh, well, here's my talking points. I'm going to try to make you fear Hillary Clinton and vote for me. Guess what, Chris Christie? Everybody who is watching the GOP debate as in hopes to pick a GOP candidate, already hates Hillary Clinton. They already hate her. 
So you don't need to make anybody fearful of Hillary Clinton because they already hate her. He's campaigning against Hillary Clinton even though he needs to be campaigning against Donald Trump, against Ted Cruz, against Marco Rubio, against Ben Carson, the people who are ahead of him. And you know, I guess Jeb Bush too, but you know, he's weak. Um, ben Carson, you know, I just mentioned him. He snoozed through the entire debate. Um, they even asked him a, a question about 15-month deployments or, or some junk like that. And he goes, oh, what? 15 what? Come on, man. Like, <laughs> he's there actively in the thing, and he's falling asleep on the moderators asking him a direct question. They even tried to say his name. And uh, I'm sure if the cameras were on the moderators heavily during this, then we would have seen somebody snap their fingers underneath the table or something like that, trying to wake uh, old Ted Cruz, not Ted, uh, Ben Carson up, trying to get him out of a sleepy land. But, you know, like always, Ben Carson, he didn't say a single thing at all during the debate, nothing of importance. Um, we have Jeb Bush, who is trying and trying and trying to come back. Everything that he says is is boring. Nobody listens to him. He's like a white noise machine. <laughs> you just put him on and you tune right out and fall right asleep. Um, I think that might be why Ben Carson was sleeping the entire time. <laughs> so then we have uh, Marco Rubio. Oh, golly, Marco Rubio. This guy... He could stand a chance to be president in, let's say, eight more years. Honestly, for the Republicans, if Marco Rubio has a better track record than what he does now in eight years, he honestly could be a presidential candidate. As of right now, he's seen a nice spike in the polls, but he's just not ready for it. You can see every time he goes into a debate and on the campaign trail, it's simply, I'm going to deliver my talking points. And during this, I'm going to throw in tidbits of fear and try to have you win over into my section. And I'm just going to continue and continue and continue. But I'm going to talk so fast and talk so much that you're just going to miss everything that I'm going to say. That's Marco Rubio. That's been him this entire campaign. And it's been a wonder to me that he's risen in the polls. But look at his other contenders. There's not many that are of good substance to hold him down. So we have these two debates, and the GOP debate, it's a snooze fest. Honestly, they didn't say anything original. The only good thing that came out of it was the uh, attack uh, from Trump on Ted Cruz about the New York values, um, and that's that's honestly the best thing that came out of the GOP debate. I mean, let me know if you disagree with me, if there was something better in it that came out of it, but honestly, if you rewatch it, it is a huge snooze fest. You won't hear a single original idea in there. And that's my criticism for Bernie Sanders as well. I love the guy. He has really great values. He's done a phenomenal job with his campaign. I know I sound like I'm brown-nosing to Bernie Sanders. But uh, he really has overcome some huge hurdles. However, in the debates, he's sounding like a broken record. And thankfully, this is the last debate before the Iowa caucus. And Bernie Sanders, he really came out swinging hard. And hopefully there's enough people who watch the debate later on to help him go up in the poll numbers. I think that there will be. Uh, social media has been Bernie Sanders' greatest accomplishment so far. And that's one thing that I don't get with the other GOP candidates. All right, so we still have to, some time here. So with the GOP candidates and with Hillary Clinton and Martin O'Malley, Social media is free, guys. You can post on there as long as you want, as much as you want. It's completely free. If you have a million subscribers on any or all of your channels combined, why would you not take advantage of that? Donald Trump has done phenomenal as far as social media has gone. And look at his poll numbers. There's a coincidence there. Yes, he's saying outrageous things or doing outrageous things like before the GOP debate. He has the uh, the cheerleaders lip sync to that creepy pro America song, that's a hip hop song about Donald Trump. Um, but that got a media coverage. That did amazing for him. However, he's also posting all the time on social media, attacking, attacking, attacking. 
And guess what? He's tapping into the Republican base. At all times of the day, there's tweets out from Donald Trump. All times of the day. With Ted Cruz or Jeb Bush um, or Ben Carson or Marco Rubio or take your pick of the other uh, litter. It doesn't matter. They're all doing the same thing on social media. It's, oh, hey, this is my talking point. And uh, yeah, I know you heard it in the debate, but I hope you like it. Retweet it, please. Come on, man. Trump is putting out advertisements on Tumblr <laughs> and on Twitter and on Facebook. They're free to do that. Yes, you have to pay money to make the thing, but it's free when you post it on there. If you're not taking advantage of that, you are lost in the sauce. It was one of my criticisms for Bernie Sanders when he first started. When Bernie Sanders' campaign first started, he was only putting quotes on Facebook and not sharing any videos of things. But after maybe a month of campaigning and people criticizing him of not putting videos up, look at his Facebook now. Look at his Twitter now or the other areas that people are posting for him on social media. There's videos there. There's things for people to watch that are short. And to the point, and it does wonders for him. This is one of the reasons why he's doing so well on social media. Hillary Clinton, she's putting the same thing out over and over. It's, hey, I'm running too. I'm running for president. Hey, don't you like me? Here's my talking points over and over. It's nothing of substance that she's putting out there. She's just spewing out garbage all the time hoping that people don't look into her emails or the FBI might indict her or um, or many of the other things like the Goldman Sachs paying her like $600,000 for two speeches. She hopes that people don't go and look into that. And that's fine. You know, as a candidate, you don't want people to go and look into that. But you got to post a lot of stuff to get people's minds off of that because social media moves so quick that if you're posting out there a lot, then, hey, People are going to start to grasp onto you more. And that's what uh, Donald Trump has done so well in this. Even during his campaign, um, he's always posting things out there, but especially during debates when people are out there and they're on Twitter, like we know that they are during the debates, he's posting in them. It doesn't matter if it's a Republican or Democrat, he's posting nonstop during that. The person who puts their name out there the most has the best chance in the election. And it baffles the minds of the super PACs on this because Donald Trump has done so well. And they're thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm buying so much. I'm spending millions upon millions of dollars for these campaigns. So my candidate's going to win. Well, look at Rick Perry. Look at Mitt Romney. Look at Ted Cruz. Look at Marco Rubio. These guys are not winning even though they had the most amount of money for their campaigns over the years. But Donald Trump comes in and he spends, you know, a few million dollars here and there and he surges in the polls. It's not that he's saying things that are actually going to be feasible for America. It's just he's saying things, whether it's correct or it's not, if it's ignorant or if it's intelligent. He's just saying things over and over and over, and it resonates. It's just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. So that's that's the debates. <laughs> I know I kind of went on for a while there um, about the social media thing, but you know, if if you think that there was something better in the debates that I didn't talk about, uh, let me know on Twitter. You can find me there at C-I-T-Z Speak. That's at C-I-T-Z Speak. Um, if you want to come on for an interview sometime or leave me a voicemail, I have Skype now as well. Uh, contact me on Twitter. I'll, I'll send you out the information for that. Um, this radio show, if you haven't listened before, if this is your first time, um, this is Citizen Speak here. I try to be down the middle. I mean, obviously, I have a liberal bias to an extent. Um... But if somebody says something, it doesn't matter what party line that they're on, I'm calling them out for it. I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, Lemon Party, Independent, I'm calling them out if they're saying garbage. And you know what, honestly, if I say something that's factually incorrect, you call me out too. I want to know. 
If, uh, if I missed something or I misspoke, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, again, find me on Twitter. I'd love to talk to you at CITZ Speak. Thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Garrett Martin. I'm your host here on Citizen Speak. Have a great night. From the crystal clear waters of Lake Superior and the waterfalls of our upper peninsula to the potholes on I-94 and the smog clouds frolicking across the Zug Island horizon. From the waves crashing against the shore in Port Austin to the tulips and craft beer seeming to erupt from the earth along the Lake Michigan coastline. Michiganity is flowing through our veins, and it shows in the energetic, creative individuals all across our great state. We at Michigan Internet Radio are here to showcase the finest independent Internet radio broadcasters from our peninsulas. If you create and produce your own podcast or internet radio program and you'd like to be a part of the future of broadcasting, send us an email, would ya? Hotbutterpodcast at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter at MI Internet Radio. Thank you. <laughs>